don't find you. All the commentators of the Hadith said she meant, what if you die? The Prophet said to the woman, if you don't find me, then go to Abu Bakr. This is another evidence of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ibn Omar said, and this hadith is in Bukhari, we used to say in the midst of the Prophet, وسلم, he heard us saying it and he did not object to us saying it. The best from among us is Abu Bakr, then Omar, then Uthman. He, the Prophet, heard us saying it and he did not stop us from saying it. He approved of it. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Iqtado billadina min ba'di. Abu Bakr wa Umar. Follow those who come after me, Abu Bakr and Umar. The fifth Imam of the Shiites said, All the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam became apostates, kafirs, except three. Only three remain in Islam. They asked him which three. He said, Miqdad ibn Aswad, Ammar ibn Yasir, and Salman al-Farisi. Now, this aqidah of the Shiite is extremely dangerous. To make takfir on the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very dangerous, and I'll tell you why it's dangerous afterwards. There's an ayah, Surah 5, verse 67, in which the Shiites said that Allah Ta'ala commanded the Prophet to pronounce Ali ibn Abi Talib as his rightful successor. And the Prophet was hesitant to, to proclaim, to make this announcement, because he was afraid of the Muslims. He, the Prophet, was afraid of the Muslims. So Allah revealed an ayah to reprimand the Prophet. The ayah Ya ayyuha rasul O Messenger, Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. Proclaim what your Lord has commanded you to proclaim, what your Lord has revealed unto you. Wa in lam taf'al. And if you don't, Fama balakta risalata. If you don't make this announcement, you failed in proclaiming the message of Allah Ta'ala. Surah 5, verse 67. They claim that the cause of revelation is that the Rasul was afraid to announce Ali as his successor. Now there is a, a well on the outskirts of Medina called Ghadir Kum. At the farewell pilgrimage, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a speech at Ghadir Kum. And the Rasul said, anyone, if I am his wali, then Ali is also his wali. Now this speech at the well, Ghadir Kum, Ghadir Kum is very important for the Shiites. They hang on to Ghadir Kum as their evidence that Ali was the rightful successor. Why did the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stop the Muslims after the Hajj, gave a, a speech and said, if I am your wali, then Ali is your wali. What is the meaning of the Arabic word wali? Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah Translate the word to mean, if I am your friend, Ali is your friend. If I am your helper, Ali is your helper. If I am your companion, Ali is your companion. The Shia said, the Sunnis, your interpretation of the word Wali, the Arabic word Wali is wrong. The word means, if I am your master, then Ali is your master. So they translate the word wali to mean master therefore when the rasul gave the speech at ghadir kum he announced the caliphate of ali so all the sahabas who heard ghadir kum the bayan the speech and didn't give their bay'ah to ali because they claimed that they accepted ali as their caliph and shook his hand and said congratulations you have become our master this is their interpretation of the hadith and this is their narration so after the rasul died all the sahabas who chose abu Bakr to be caliph they broke their promise to ali that they made at ghadir kum the well on the outskirts of medina where the prophet stood and gave the bayan 
So because they broke their promise to Ali, they all became kafirs except for three, Miqdad ibn Aswad, Ammar ibn Yasir, and Salman al-Farisi. And the reason why they included Salman al-Farisi is because he is a Persian. Now why did the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make the speech at Ghadir Kum and said, if I am your friend, Ali is your friend. Because a man admitted to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he hate Ali. A man admitted to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he hate Ali. Now why is it that a lot of people hated Ali in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It is said because he killed many, many kafirs on the battlefield. He, partake, he partook in the battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, the battle of Khandak, the battle of Khaybar. He partook in many, many battles, the battle of Hunain. And he killed many, many kafirs on the battlefield. When the two armies used to come face to face, the army of the Muslims and the army of the Kafirs, the Kafirs used to come with beautiful jewelry and they show off with their weapons. And they used to say to the Muslims, send out your champion. Send out your champion. A Muslim would fight with a Kafir until one of them died. Sword by sword. Until one killed the other. So every time the Kafirs would say to the Prophet, وسلم, send out your champion. And they used to brag and boast about their weapons. The Prophet always pick on Ali to go and take on the Kafir. And Ali never lost a single duel. He always dispatched the Kafir to the hellfire. So Ali, Ali has a lot of blood on his hands, the blood of Kufar. So because of that, even though some of them embrace Islam, they, they can't get over that their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, their nephews were killed by Ali on the battlefield. So a man admitted to the Rasul that he hate Ali. So when the man admitted to the Rasul that he hate Ali, because Ali is from the Prophet's family, he gathered the people of at Khadirukum and made an announcement. If I am your wali, then Ali ibn Abi Talib is your wali. This is our interpretation. The evidence of the Sunni is stronger. Why? The most important act of ibadah is your salah. Why did the Prophet insist that Abu Bakr and nobody else except Abu Bakr Siddiq should lead the Muslims in prayer? Another problem the Shiites have. Have you heard of Fadak? An oasis. Where is this oasis situated? At Khaybar. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, Fatima came and demanded the oasis from Abu Bakr. So my father left it as my birthright, my inheritance. Abu Bakr Siddiq did his ijtihad and he quoted a hadith, Nahnu ma'ashar al-anbiya la nurath. We prophets, we do not leave behind properties to be inherited by others. This was the evidence of Abu Bakr. Now the Shiites, they refuted this hadith of, of, of Abu Bakr. How did they refute it? They used the Quran. وَوَرَثَ Sulaiman Dawood. Sulaiman inherited from Dawood. So they said Abu Bakr contradicted the Quran. Sulaiman inherited from Dawood. And Suleiman was a prophet, Dawood was a prophet. So prophets, you can inherit from prophets. That's the ayah they quoted. Now how do you explain the ayah? Because if you cannot explain the ayah, the Shiites will confuse you about your deen. In regards to Suleiman and Dawood, who was the rich one and who was the poor one? Who was the rich one? Suleiman. And who was the poor one? Dawood. So what did Suleiman inherit from Dawood. Knowledge, not wealth. This is the tafsir of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. Suleiman, the rich one, inherited from the poor one. What did he inherit? Knowledge. So when the Shiites use that ayah to refute Abu Bakr, that evidence 
doesn't stand up to scrutiny because Suleiman was the wealthy one, Dawood was a poor one. What he inherited from his father was knowledge, not wealth.